that's how I almost crashed the car at the drag strip and it was not fun. So we're gonna be talking about what really happened or my speculation as to what happened and some big plan that I'm considering for next year, especially given with the traction issues. I'm thinking uh, switching up the setup a little bit, especially because I do enjoy going to the drag strip and what fun is it if you're just gonna spin and not be able to put the power down. All right, so those of you who are new to the channel, don't know the setup, I have the 285 19s with the pilot sport all season four tires. Uh, it's a square setup, so I've got the same thing on the rear, as you can see, and in the front as well. So the setup itself is very nice. It has held up pretty good in terms of the street driving, even getting it on from a stoplight. Uh, I've been pretty surprised given that these are all season. And most people said that, you know, these all season four are pretty comparable to the Pilot Sport 4S, at least for the street driving when you're really getting on it. But obviously with the track, it's going to be different. I didn't, wasn't really planning on tracking the car or even taking the drag strip. The first time I took this car to the drag strip was with these tires on and I ran at 12.7, which I know is kind of slow for this car, but that was my first time ever going to the drag strip. And I think I did well. So now after getting the Lund tune, I was really hoping I could drop it at least to 12.5, if not, you know, 12.3, 12.4, uh, because that would have been my second time going to the drag strip. So I was hoping to run that time. And I got this time around, I got only two runs in, which wasn't fun compared to almost seven runs that I got to run for the first time around. So anyways, with the Lund tune, I was hoping I was gonna run mid to low 12, which should be easy for someone who is inexperienced like myself. But I am not gonna lie, she let me down. Uh, maybe not the car itself, maybe the tires. Uh, I feel like the drag strip itself was not prepped properly. There was a car crash there too. Although I don't know if it was solely just because of the prepping because the other cars were running completely fine no issues whatsoever it was just my car um that i, I ran two times both of them the times i had traction issues i turned i had the traction control on as well and that was with the traction control on the second run i did not have traction control on and it was even worse um i was not able to get that on the video but yeah so i think it's the tires um the tires are really good for street setup the 285s in the rear the really good tires but when you're trying to go to the drag strip this is just not cutting it so i need to figure out what i want to do with these i could have done a longer burnout but i think on street tires burnout is not really necessary to get some heat into these tires and they're brand new i mean i've had only 5,000 miles on them so i wouldn't say that the traction was because the tires have worn down when i first ran them it was around 2,000 miles that these had next time was like around 5,000 miles so it's not the tire. I think what it is, is kind of specific to, I think the tune itself because drag strip mode is something that even when I had these tires brand new, I struggled with it because on the upshift, if you guys have, you know, different driving modes, you do know that on the upshift, the upshifts are really, really violent. So because of that, it was not fun to be able to, like every time it would upshift, the car would break traction and Lund does a hybrid thing. So basically it's not as violent as a drag strip mode, but it is pretty up there. You can see the car is wanting to lunge forward a little bit. And I think that's what's causing it because of the upshifts where I'm having issues. Now, I personally really enjoyed going to the drag strip and just running the car, really getting a feel for the car. And if I'm gonna wanna do this next season, this upcoming season, I don't think these tires are gonna cut it. So I have two different options I can kind of go and if you guys have one or the other, uh, comment below and just kind of help me out in terms of what setup will be the best for drag strip purposes. Of course, if I'm going track, one of the setups may not work as well, but let's talk about it and see how we can improve the traction of the Mustang and actually put the power down. What's the use of having all this power if you cannot put it down? So, so like we said, we have the 285, 35, 19s, all season setup currently and these tires on the street, a lot of people say they're pretty comparable to Pilot Sport 4S. Now, of course, if you're tracking it, it's gonna be a little bit different um, as to what you get with the, with the drag strip performance and the track performance. Now, while these tires do just fine on the street um, and may not be able to really differentiate between a Pilot Sport 4S and a Pilot Sport All Season 4 tire, I'm starting to think if I'm gonna be drag stripping this car or tracking this car, 
just having a softer compound with the Pos 4 4S is gonna make a huge difference. And I think that's one of the options I can go. So right now I have a square set up. I can bump it up to 305s in the back over there. Keep these 285, but of course, switch the tires from all season four to Pilot Sport 4S. So I'll have two different sets going on. Uh, winter time, I can run this current setup. And in the summer, I can have a different wheel setup. And this setup could work, but I do have one concern with it. The difference between the Pilot Sport all season four and Pilot Sport 4S is not huge on street at least. I don't know if I'm going to be able to notice the difference that much or if it's going to be enough of an improvement to swap out the whole setup just to be able to put 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds better time. And again, for me, because I am a very inexperienced drag racer, I think most of my improvements is going to be to see time, not the tires themselves. As long as I can put the power down, just learn the car more, what works best, I think that will be a better way for me to learn this car. Now, because I don't drag strip or track this car often, and I may not be able to tell a significant difference between my current setup and a Pilot Sport 4S, the other obvious choice, which I think is what I'm leaning towards, is getting a drag pack. Um, getting a 305 17s with the drag pack here, and I think that's going to solve all the traction issues. I've looked into the Nitto Triple R2s. Um, there's Mickey Thompson Street SS as well. Um, a lot of people seem to favor the Nitto Triple R2. I know the tread wear isn't all that on them. It's about eight to 10,000 miles if that, but if I'm swapping these out, um, what's gonna allow me is I can keep my existing setup and the wheels and everything because I absolutely love these wheels. So the wheels and everything is gonna remain as is. What I can do is basically swap the rear out every time I wanna go for drag strip or the weather is nice. I know I'm gonna be cruising it and really trying to have fun with the car. I can swap them out, enjoy the drag pack, put the power down because that's where the significant difference is going to come in. And I think if I'm going for 305.17, it's not going to be costly or not as costly as getting Passport 4S, swapping all the wheels out, getting a whole new setup and have a dedicated winter and summer setup. With a drag pack, of course, it's going to be hassle swapping them out here and there, um, even when it's summer, but I don't want to, you know, put miles on it because I'm just commuting or something like that uh, but I think that might be the obvious setup to putting the power down and I think I've seen a lot of cars on the same mods and everything drop significant time once they have put the drag pack so I think that might be the obvious solution to get a drag pack next season I am on Lund 93 tune currently but I do want to try out the E85 and if I can't put the power down with their 93 tune there's no way I'm going to be able to put the power down with the E85. So for me to do that next season, I am leaning towards maybe getting a drag pack. So if you guys have any recommendations on the drag packs, drop them in the comments below. And if you have had maybe some sort of all season tires and have gone to full blown summer tires, what has the difference been? Has it been noticeable enough for you to justify getting a completely different setup or is the pilot or is the pilot sport for us? pretty much as good as a drag radial for this level of performance. I know if I was supercharged, then this wouldn't work. I would need to get a proper setup. But if I'm, you know, making stock-ish power, would you suggest that Passport 4S will do more than enough for what I need it for? And I don't have to get a drag pad. So yeah, I'm just curious as to what you guys think in terms of what I need to go ahead. I'm leaning towards drag pad only because it's gonna be not that expensive to getting a whole new set for next year. And because I don't really take the drag strip that often, like that might be something next year I do want to do a little bit more often than I did this year. I went only twice, but I don't see myself going more than four or five times, you know, especially if the car is not being built. Like once I do boost it, then yes, uh, getting more seat time and getting better times. Um, that is in the plans too. I've been researching ESS kits a lot, um, especially just this reset up with a 120 millimeter pulley. On a 93, they're making high six to low 700 horsepower. And I think that is pretty impressive. Uh, so I'm definitely looking into that too. So next year, we may have some big power mods coming for the Red 5.0. So I'm really excited for that. But of course, I need to be able to put the power down in its current form, in, in its current form, but also in E85, just to get a better, just to get more seat time with the car, get a handle on the car, see how the traction is working. Once that is dialed in, because the last thing you want to do is you want to put all this power. A lot of YouTubers do that where they've got big power number. They cannot put it down. Fancy supercharger turbo setup, claiming 1,000 plus horsepower, 800 plus horsepower. But if you can't put it down, 
then it's all that money being spent where you cannot, you know, put the power down and it's being, which is why we have seen uh, instances where a full bolt-on E85 coyote is beating on some of the boosted setup because either they don't have proper tires, it's not tuned properly, um, of course, if everything was one for one, boosted setup is going to be much better, but if it's not, um, then of course, you know, if you have a better tire on an E85 full bolt on car, you know, that might take it. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, I want to put, be able to put the power down with this current setup with the E85 next year, and then really think what I want to do with the build next year. Because I feel like if I have drag pack, if I go with the ESS kit next year, there's no way I'm putting the power down. Even with the PS4S, like the Passport 4S, I've looked up, you know, on forums and, you know, Facebook pages, people are just saying that's not, if you're gonna go boost, you have to get a drag radio. There's just no way around it. So the drag pack might, might be the answer. It's cheaper right now. And if I do plan to go big next year, then it's also gonna help with that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, comment below what tire setup you're currently running to help me out with it. And of course, subscribe to Red 5.0 for more videos.